Are you looking for a pepper to grow that is easy, simple, produces a ton, and makes a pepper that's not too hot or spicy? That's me. And if that's you, then this video is what you want to watch. Say it with me, sha shi to Shishito. Can you say that three times fast? Shishito peppers are one of the easiest things to grow in terms of growing peppers in the garden. And today I'm gonna to give you some quick tips to have your own shishito pepper plant growing in your garden too. Let's get started. Welcome to Gardenary. Garden plus ordinary equals gardenary. So our mission at Gardenary is to make gardening an ordinary part of everybody's life once again, you included. So subscribe to the Gardenary channel. You can do that right below. Hit the bell so that you know every time we drop a new video, especially ones about shishitos. And stay tuned because we've got tons of garden videos coming your way. Let's get started talking about shishito peppers. Sound good? So um, growing peppers is, um, I don't know, it's kind of like on everybody's wish list. At least it seems like that with our rooted garden clients. Everybody signs up for peppers. I've got four kids and peppers are one of the few vegetables and I can get pretty much all four of them to eat. Um, but here's the trick, growing bell peppers in the garden can be somewhat of a frustrating experience, especially for a beginner gardener. Bell peppers are just that, bells, and they have to grow to a pretty nice size before you can harvest them. Through that process, it's like a 60 to 90 day process, there's all kinds of things that can go wrong. So they can end up with blossom end rot or you know, pest issues or too much water, or too little water. And I've just found that beginner gardeners or even you know, middle of the road gardeners who've had some experience can end up with challenges with bell peppers. Then on the other side are jalapeno peppers. And those are, I think, much, much easier to grow in the garden. You can get tons of them off of just one plant. They're a lot more forgiving and because they're smaller, you don't have to wait so long to harvest. But here's the kicker. Not everybody can stomach a jalapeno pepper. I'm included in that list and my kids are too. Just ask them about the trips we've taken to go get pho when they mistakenly picked up a jalapeno pepper and ended up pretty sick afterwards. Yeah, it was some drama. So enter the shishito, three syllables. You can't forget it, shishito. It's not super hot like a jalapeno and it's not as hard to grow as a bell pepper. It's right in between. So it's got this nice sweet flavor and uh, the plants produce tons of fruit as you can see from this one plant. Um, so it's got the ease of growing a jalapeno without the spice and um, more of the sweetness of a bell pepper. So this is why I recommend shishitos be one of the first pepper plants you grow. Now, peppers like to grow in the warm season, which means they don't wanna grow when there's a chance of frost. So don't plant them out until frost has passed. And uh, then you wanna make sure you harvest all of them before frost is coming. Generally for most people, this means you're gonna grow them in the summer. I like to put my pepper plants in the garden as a plant, not as a seed, because it takes quite a long time for the seed to turn into a plant. And by the time I could put the seed in the garden, once the frost is passed, I could already have a plant growing. So to me, it makes total sense to either buy a great shishito plant from a local grower, from a local farmer or a CSA, or to start your own inside. They're not that hard to do. You just have to have the right setup. So you're gonna put your plant directly into the garden after the threat of frost has passed. And then you just wanna give it a good bit of space. So we like to call pepper plants medium-sized plants, which means they don't need a ton of space, like more than one or two square feet, but they also don't need just a tiny little bit of space like a salad plant or an herb plant. Um, once you plant these out, you wanna make sure that you feed them. So pepper plants like to get um, new food every few weeks. So I like to just come in, put a little bit of extra compost around the base of my pepper plants on a regular basis. Let's say every two to three weeks while they're starting to grow. And then comes the fun part. You want to make sure you keep harvesting them. So to be honest, I actually left all these pepper plants, peppers on this plant to impress you because it wasn't gonna be very exciting for me to tell you that it's fun to grow shishitos and only have one shishito on the plant. Um, but in general, you shouldn't let this happen. So as soon as you start to see the first shishitos form on the plant, um, especially the ones at the bottom, 
you want to come in and harvest those. And really, as soon as you see a pepper start to be um, this size is almost uh, too big. So even if you start to see a pepper about this size, you can come in and start to harvest. So you might want to be harvesting um, during the production phase of the plant. You might want to harvest every three to four days. And the last thing you want to do is have all these peppers hanging on the plant. Because uh, when you do that, the plant's so busy supporting those peppers that it can't produce new ones. And that's just a bummer. So get out there, do the fun, easy part of maintaining shishito plants, which is harvesting the shishitos. So you may find that your pepper plants need to be staked. So oftentimes um, with plants in the nightshade family, they need support because um, they don't necessarily have their own vining ability, um, but they oftentimes will grow too tall to hold themselves up. And you'll get into a situation where a big storm comes in or heavy rain or even a big wind or something, or maybe a kid in your garden, that might happen too, and um, suddenly your plant falls over. So there's a couple different ways you can do it. For me, what I've done is I have my pepper plant planted really close to my obelisk trellis. So I even came in here and tucked the back of the plant into the trellis to keep it standing up. But you can do it in a simpler way. And that's just by having a garden stake. So you probably wanna do this before the plant really gets truly established. But you just come in, this one's probably a little bit large, um, but we're planning for big things, right? So you could come in and you wanna go to the outside of the plant and just slowly start to push the stake down. I'm gonna have to stand up to put my muscle in here. Basically, I'm gonna push the stake down and then I would take the main stem of the shishito and just tie it against the stake. So this will give it a nice support and then as the plant continues to grow up, I can just continue to use twine and keep it attached to the stake so it never falls over and we end up breaking branches and not getting all the fruit we want out of the plant, which would be such a bummer, right? So staking your pepper plants is another way to make sure you get as much production as possible from them. So there you have it, shishitos. Who knew, right? Shishito, and it's just like, it's fun to say. So I just think it's more interesting than to say bell pepper or even jalapeno, even though that's a different language too. Um, shishitos are great because they're not too spicy. You'll get a ton of them. And um, there's so many ways you can use them inside your kitchen. So I hope you will give growing shishitos a try. If you have questions about growing shishitos, where to get seeds, how to get started, be sure to put those in the comments below. And if you wanna grow shishitos or really anything and figure out the next way to get started in your own garden journey, you gotta take the green thumb quiz. So right below this video, there's a great link you can go to. We have a few questions we ask you and then we tell you what kind of gardener we think you are and give you some free resources to help you grow to the next level. So go check it out. The Green Thumb Quiz is right below. Come back and tell me what kind of gardener you are. Thanks so much for watching the Gardenary channel and I'll see you and your shishitos next time. Bye.